Brandon. Welcome to Capecast. Thank you for the introduction there, Brandon, as always. Yeah. We've got a WandaVision review for you guys tonight, and we've also got two guests, Chris returning. Welcome back, Chris. And we've got a new Thanks friend. Me again, guys. Britt. What's up, guys? How you doing? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for joining hey, Brandon. us, Britt. We need it. Hey, how you doing? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> Good. <laughs> We, we, Ryan and I, obviously, we have a, a little bit of a bias towards DC, so we felt like it would it's be true. good to add another Marvel elitist to the We're cast. We're leveling the playing field right <laughs> now. So we, that's why we have Chris and we got Britt, both who but have... Britt comes in peace. Yeah, Raise that yeah, shirt up. Got, uh, uh, rep, rep yeah, in the, yeah. Repping the Batman, so... There you go. go. There you go. <laughs> You can um, so like both, guess, guys. You can. Yes, yes, you can. You it's can have true. your preference. We obviously do. It's true. I mean, there's a right preference, but yeah, you can have <laughs> yep. your preference. <laughs> yeah. So before we get started, um, I do want to encourage folks uh, to follow us on Twitter at Cape Cash Show. Um, we've got uh, we're pretty active on there, and we love talking comic book movies. So definitely give us a follow there. Um, obviously, hit the subscribe button here on YouTube and let us know what you think about the video down in the comments. Um, if you're liking one division, if you, if there's stuff you don't like about it, if there's stuff that you don't like about Brandon, be sure to tell us what you don't like about Brandon. My face. If I'm wearing a beanie um, and I look like a meme, <laughs> <laughs> if someone were weird. to ever make that, no, I mean, this is not a real thing that's happened. I'm just saying, for instance, <laughs> yeah, if you have yeah. that opinion, let us know. Is Brandon? Let me know how I can show. I can change my appearance to make you guys feel better about watching our show. Because that's, that's what right. I'm here for. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we are back to talk about the sixth episode of WandaVision, um, the all-new Halloween Spooktacular. So, as usual, let's kind of go around the room here and just kind of give initial thoughts. Um, we let's start with chris chris go for it well i know my initial thoughts uh the end of last week's episode i said (laughs) a lot of complaints and i said but they finally got me they might have lost me already Uh what i don't know i'm very undecided um i'm just being a little pessimistic right now okay so what happened interesting am i supposed to we're gonna get into that oh we're gonna get into that (laughs) you You still don't get the concept do you i don't (laughs) It's obvious. Watch our reviews. I don't get it. <laughs> All right, Britt, what'd you think? Yeah, no, I, I I'm kind of on that other side, man. Like, uh, I, I definitely watching y'all's review last time. Uh, first, first couple episodes were a little rough, but um, definitely episode three started to get me in there. Four had me hooked, um, and this one just kept me there. So there's there's a lot that happened in it. Um, it we'll be kind of going through and talking about, but uh, definitely really enjoyed seeing the different aspects here and i think there's a lot um that they're kind of ramping up to that's just going to continue to hit us every single episode moving forward sure cool brandon um yeah i i felt like this episode i can i think i kind of see what chris i mean i don't he hasn't said why he feels this way but i (laughs) i i feel like it was a little bit of it wasn't as like exciting as the last episode I mean, they had that big clip, that mm-hmm. big reveal at the end, so that helped, I'm sure. But sure. Um, I did like this episode. Uh, it didn't like wane for me. Like it, it, it was still pretty strong, and I like where it's going. I got a lot of like Truman Show. I mean, and this whole thing is, you know, in general, kind of like a Truman Show type vibe. But specifically with Vision, I got a lot of Truman Show vibes um, when he's like yeah. wandering around. But um, yeah, I mean, we can go more in detail. But I still felt. I felt pretty positive. It wasn't my favorite episode, but I did like, I liked the the Halloween aspect of it. I thought it was um, a pretty cool, like um, a, a good excuse for them to like put them in more like comic booky type costumes and sure. do those little nods. Um, but I did like the like, uh, I guess them introducing how she's like only able to control so much. And so once he gets like outside of like where she is, things are kind of like, you know, falling apart, not really working correctly, just kind of in some sort of limbo state. She's, she's having a hard time kind of controlling everything, um, kind of unraveling. So, um, but yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Cool. Yeah. Um, (laughs) I, 
would I, I it's gonna be tough for i think any episode in this season to top the last episode for me yeah just because of the mutants thing at the end i know it's like such a small <laughs> part of that episode but it's just the, well, int- the kind of introduces a different little like i guess uh nugget to that whole element right. of mutants as far as like the quicksilver thing and i guess we can sure. get into that too but it's a little different than i expected it to be yeah for sure um I think I kind of talked about in the last one. I'm just such a like I, I love the the movies are hit and miss, but I do love the Fox universe. So just seeing him at the end of the last episode with, you know, the direction that they kind of implied, which, you know, we will talk about in a second how it's a little different. But um, that just had me stoked, like <laughs> more than anything I'd seen in the show so far. Um, so I can definitely see how this episode is a little bit of a. Um, pull back from that um but i am interested to hear chris what kind of like what is it about this episode that you know has you on the fence i guess yeah i mean like you just said it was the end of the last one kind of like it seemed like hey here's the bridge to the fox universe we're seeing you know the evan peters uh version of quicksilver you know it ended and it seemed pretty cool exciting we were gonna get like something with this multiverse a crossover and then you get to this mm-hmm. episode and it doesn't really seem like that's the case i mean maybe it is yeah. it just it was just kind of muddy i guess of like okay is this supposed to be mm-hmm. you know an imaginary version of a pietro they just phasing like, actors in yeah, yeah. <laughs> like you know is this supposed to be someone from a different thing like what is his knowledge based on it was just like a lot of questions but none of them were like interesting questions from my mind of like oh mm-hmm. how did he do this or why does he know that or not know this it was more of just like okay so you're not going in the direction maybe i don't know yeah. like it just seemed i don't know like yeah a little, him a little bit him, of a drop down from how it ended before and i just i sure. don't know him What's addressing that, how he doesn't understand why he looks different him talking about remembering yeah. getting shot yeah and uh, losing his accent and things like that I was like, okay, well, okay. How, well, that just introduces an element of, okay, well, if this isn't like the Evan Peters Quicksilver, then how is the Aaron Taylor Johnson quote unquote version back? Just yeah. looking. Yeah. Different. It was also, mm-hmm. it just felt, I mean, I guess it, I guess technically he would, he could be acting differently because of her, but he also yeah. is like I feel like he sees under the hood a little bit right well I think mm-hmm. with what she's yeah. doing I, and I think one of the things that kind of stands out right like um, in this in this world she's went out and she's gotten vision and she's brought vision into her bubble right so she went and kidnapped him sure. brought him in there but it doesn't really make sense and I think that that's kind of what you guys are, are hinting at is it doesn't make sense that now her brother is there like I'm sure we'll talk about it more when she sees him and sees like him being dead beside her like how did he get there? Mm-hmm. Where does it make sense that vision mm-hmm. was there? Cause she brought him there. Um, so I could see that being yeah. a little interesting and, and strange as well in that aspect. Maybe we've got a, maybe, maybe we've got a wonder woman 84 situation <laughs> and just using a different body. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. I mean, maybe, I mean, I guess the, the easy answer and maybe probably, I guess the right answer is just that, just like Vision is dead and he, he's reanimated animated here. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Quicksilver is the same circumstance, but for some reason it's Evan Peters. That's but he, a, so it is implied though that he knows like what's going on in this town, right? Yeah. Or does yeah. it seem like yeah. he's, yeah, he says, so why, so my question is why would he act like the Evan Peters Quicksilver from the X-Men movies if he's not actually, because Quicksilver from the Age of Ultron didn't act it like that at all. No, yeah. I don't even know he that the Evan Peters guy. one did either, though. Like, he was definitely more of like a mischievous kind of like goofy character, but still not quite like what we're seeing. And I think even like yeah, the I mean he's lighter for sure. There, but he has but like I guess I think about him jetting around the mansion and stuff, and yeah. like I don't know, doing goofy things to people, and I don't know. Yeah, there's there's one thing that um, again you guys didn't touch on too much uh, on the last episode, but. If we think about like everything that happened in our world, right, with COVID and it messed up all these timelines, like this show was supposed to come out after Falcon and Winter Soldier. 
and it was supposed to line up directly yeah. with um uh dr strange in the multiverse of, of madness and everything so what i'm curious mm -hmm. and i'm not sure if you guys have have watched it yet but the falcon winter soldier trailer that dropped uh at the super bowl it, you start to see you know baron zemo the fact that he doesn't like super powered people or anybody you know that that's above anybody else in that aspect and so i'm, I'm curious mm -hmm. if potentially uh, we're going to see some stuff in Falcon Winter Soldier with mutants, with some of those crossovers to where we would have seen potentially new castings of characters. And then the the reveal here of the Fox mutants coming in would have been an even bigger shock than just him being there. Right. Like if we would have seen point. like a that could be interesting. Yeah. Like a, a re like. I don't think it'll happen, but let's just say we had like a recasting of a Wolverine, because if you guys again you dig into those trailers you'll see some of the locations they're at hints at uh some of the x-men including wolverine so like if we would have saw that recasted and then all of a sudden we saw this quicksilver i think it it may have even been a bigger shock um but yeah I'm, i want to see what everything looks like in the in the universe but um you know we know the timeline's really messed up all movies not just marvel dc had issues with you know timing on some stuff too so like i'm curious what that's really going to do with Black Widow with, you know, Doctor Strange, but I'm I'm curious what it did here with this particular series and maybe if we're missing a couple pieces that we should have known or would have known. Sure, it'd be interesting to see a like a mix mash of new mutants and <laughs> folks we've seen before. Well, yeah. back to the whole like logistics as far as timeline. I always was under the impression that Falcon and Winter Soldier was supposed to come out after Black Widow, and it but it's not anymore, right? Correct. Like now they're releasing it before Black Widow, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and it's so is that whatever parts of like so I think isn't thought, Black Widow like it's uh, it's has to be like a prequel pre to what we've yeah, seen though. Yeah. It is it right, is but a some prequel. there's some I believe Florence Pugh's character is supposedly going to be in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Um, gotcha. Th that's the rumor, at least. And that's part of the reason why. I don't know. The, there's probably other things that are supposed to happen that kind of mm -hmm. tie in. You know, they mm -hmm. have, they have, that's the way they do things. But that's why I was shocked whenever they announced that Falcon and Winter Soldier was coming out in March, or so at least starting in March. Yeah. It um, should, it should knows? line up with this one ending and that one essentially kicking off either the next week or within a week of each other. So they're probably yeah, yeah. so so um comfortable with how charismatic their characters are that they don't care which one they're introduced in if it's a pre and post type storyline just like <laughs> they're so good at what they do <laughs> yeah. in building these worlds because they'll have to be some sort of introduction to her character in falcon and winter soldier even if she was introduced in black widow mm -hmm. just to cover the folks that hadn't seen black widow yeah and maybe I mean, you'd imagine. but you I mean they they have the Rambo character here, and they kind of gloss over, you know, the whole. Mm -hmm. Like if I I if I and I haven't watched Captain Marvel, so but I knew that mm -hmm. was it Monica Rambo. What's the what's yeah, it's the Monica mom's Rambo. name? Oh, like this one's name um, is Monica. What's the other one? What's the mom? Captain Marvel. I saw that movie and I dumped that movie immediately. <laughs> I saw. Well, anyway, like minutes. that can they don't they just kind of like if you, you know you know sure. if you don't. I mean, they, they talk about her mom passing away and that kind of thing, but, mm -hmm. you know, I knew because I'm yeah, like, the only reason I, I knew was because Katie remembered um, yeah. her name from Captain Marvel. Speaking of Monica Rambeau, though, they hint that her like that she might be mutant now yeah. because she's been in the hex mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that it's changing her biological makeup. And is, is that what we're assuming is going to be how they introduce mutants going forward is but, this is the origin for Potentially. I mean, I, I know, Chris, you can probably talk to it too, but she's had several different monikers and names throughout her comic book history. Um, it, you know, one of the ones that's probably going to make the most sense is Spectrum based on, you know, all the different x-rays and stuff they did of her. But one thing that I, and again, I watch a ton of the little things you missed or, you know, um, uh, you know, all the different uh, hidden Easter eggs, but nobody's pointed out the fact that during the whole part where she gets snapped back she comes around a corner and hits a dude and he goes like flat on his back and she's not even phased so <laughs> i think they're either going to like 
hint at the fact that she got her powers from the snap and maybe the people coming back from the snap or something that maybe had some of the um, pieces to it or potentially if, if they just want to make it easier she had them before the snap and you know we're just now starting to see them mm -hmm. now but yeah i mean i guess that could be could be a way to work it in um but i mean they definitely draw attention in this episode about the cellular makeup changing mm -hmm. of her now that she's out of the hex and that kind of thing i mean it could it could def or it could actually be the fact that they don't want like want her character to go back in like maybe mm -hmm. there's some story reason why they don't want her to go back in yeah i don't know i mean it's possible like like you're talking about it is a i mean it's a mutant like mm -hmm. it's a very easy pivot to a mutant no. yeah yeah <laughs> It could almost be like a, an awakening type mm -hmm. thing too. Yeah. Of like, you know, she already kind of has that in her genes. Maybe mm -hmm. X percent of the population does as well. And as soon as they get that exposure, it's like yeah. awakening that are, X gene or something. Are you um, uh, are you talking about Agents of Shield now? <laughs> and the Inhumans, you, you know, <laughs> I have I never watched that show. And one point that I kind of had a complaint with this episode and the show in general is whenever we're back with like Rambo and Co in the mm -hmm. like real Marvel universe outside it just feels like like a cheap version of like the MCU that we've seen in the films. Like it I almost, will say that I'm like, oh, I'm I don't agents. I don't like the way they transition back and forth. Like I feel like they need a better because uh, they'll be in mm -hmm. the TV show and then they're just like boom and they're back in like mm -hmm. like I just yeah I don't know some, it, it's a little jarring to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I could how see they that. go back and forth. But you're like almost you're almost relying on just like the. <laughs> like the technical like oh we're back to 1080 <laughs> like just yeah like that's the i only think they do that... have a little bitty like audio cue that they transition yeah but i don't know for whatever reason it just does it's not enough it, there needs to be some, some yeah other... there have been a couple shots where i like that's my first question is okay are we outside now mm -hmm. <laughs> especially now that we've gotten not, out of the especially black and white <laughs> episodes yeah, and stuff. The decades right up. yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> So what'd you guys think about um, Vision in this episode with him kind of like you, Brandy, you kind of mentioned Truman show ish mm -hmm. kind of treatment of his character. I mean, I really like, I liked, I mean, I like Truman show. So this him kind of like, you know, you know, being a little mischievous and getting, you know, going behind uh, Wanda's back and trying like him being like, very mm -hmm. um weary of what's going on and then the whole you know like he walks by and the lady's like in a loop like she like rolls a tear he's like you know there's a lot of like really creepy yeah. stuff going on um outside and then he, he finds um what's uh what's agnes, yeah, agnes. agnes. Mm -hmm. yeah and that whole conversation and then him getting outside the hex and the, like him fighting trying to you know be you know prevent from being pulled back in he's like disintegrating and trying to you know that whole um this episode i totally <laughs> got why they cast her in that role that, where she rolls up in that car and starts laughing <laughs> like, like, she cackle. like cackling <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it's yeah it's just it's perfect for I that. see a whole I'll, lot of also, theories about her online that i don't really i don't know yeah Maybe everybody, everybody's like, there's everybody's there's like there. he's mephisto she's yeah. mephisto <laughs> Yeah, there yeah. was there's one like you're talking about, there's one floating around that all the people in there are like all sorcerers and stuff or magic users. Um, her being uh <laughs> one of them. But uh yeah, at, as of now they haven't really shown too much. But it is interesting because in that episode they start to show you that there's a few people that are not under her control. So again, mm -hmm. we know her kids are not under her control, we know vision's not under her control. Uh but the even um I want to say Herb is his, is his name, uh, but he was dressed up as Frankenstein. Yeah. But he also was like, is everything OK? Do you need me to change something? You know, um, Agnes has done the mm -hmm. the same thing of like, hey, do you, do you want me to retake this? So I do think it's interesting that there are a few characters that know what's going on, just like we're seeing with, you know, even with Quicksilver and Pietro kind of saying some stuff that you can tell she's not controlling. So I, I think that that's. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that means they're significant. Maybe they are a magic user or something else, and they're just kind of scared of her power. But um, yeah, it's it's. I think there'll be something there. Just not really sure what it is yet. 
I've almost seen some of those moments of maybe it's like her subconscious kind mm-hmm. of like leaking out and other characters like interact with herself. Like if she's starting mm-hmm. to like, yeah, you know, delude herself in one way, she's almost talking to herself, knowledgeable yeah. in another. Um, I don't know. It's so yeah. Cool like the, the death <laughs> thing with the um, dog yeah. that they had. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Like you can definitely see some parallels there. Yeah. Um, I did dig the scene where we were talking about Agnes where he keeps walking out into the field and he reaches mm-hmm. the edge of the bubble and starts like trying to like mm-hmm. basically like claw his way out and you like see like pieces of him like ripping <laughs> off. I mean, it's, it's yeah. the like, they really like hit one end of the spectrum with like the intensity and then another end of the spectrum in intensity and like, it could be 30 seconds and, yeah. and you're at one to the other in this show. That's what's interesting about it's, it. It's a, to me, I, mean, I don't know if this was intentional, but his insides almost looked wormy to me. Like, I don't know if that was like an intentional, like rotting type thing. He's got thing. worms. That's what I, was, I was wondering if it was like some sort of like rot. I know. I don't, I don't think he's Bad flesh. Sushi. I don't know what he's made up of, but um, it just looked like squirmy little like. It, I guess something. it would be like cables and cords. Well, and he whatnot, is. Right. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah, know what his I, biological makeup is, but it just I need I'd have to rewatch to see that scene, but could it be something where like I mean he is dead. Like his body right, is yeah. dead, right? Mm-hmm. Like he could be I don't know. I mean, I guess he is technical though, so he wouldn't so that's be like what, decomposing. That, I was curious if if he successfully made it outside of the hex, if he would just like fall over dead again. Cause I don't know how he's like, is That's she keeping saying, him yeah. reanimated? Like what is, what are the rules? I don't yeah. um, Right. What are the rules? <laughs> it was um, interesting that the stone seemed like fine throughout, but he was just like disintegrating around it. And that's kind of, yeah. yeah. Well, one part you would think and that's part of a hex. And that's kind of the, the strange part that, um, I noticed on kind of going back, um, when he leaves, uh, he's got the stone in his head, but like when she sees him dead and a couple episodes back, like is he had the hole from where Thanos, you know, grabbed the stone mm-hmm. from his head. But when he was going through there, the little stone that was in his costume essentially turned into the stone. So that kind of throws another parallel. And I, again, I'm, I'm one of those, I'm a huge Marvel fan, but I will call out different things. One other thing I've noticed is so far, everything that's come out of the hex has stayed whatever it was inside. So Monica Rambo's clothes, the jump rope that was tied to, you know, as a rope on the beekeeper. But when Vision came out and when Wanda came out, they both reverted back to like their Avengers outfits, not what they had on walking through the hex. So I think that's a mm-hmm. that's another mm-hmm. strange piece that's inconsistent, but there may be a reason why it's inconsistent. Yeah, I was going to ask you, do you think that that's something like a continuity error type thing or that just a something that they didn't think about or is it intentional? I I would have said Wanda's is probably intentional because she was creating everything. Visions doesn't seem intentional unless it's just something where kind of going back to that part of Wanda's magic is somehow keeping him alive, but when he goes out yeah. like the hex magic can't do anything to him or something. Yeah. That's why I was thinking that she is, as long as she is like continually like keeping him quote unquote alive or whatever, Mm -hmm. he's remain, he'll remain in that form. But cause I don't see any other way of it not being, I mean, I don't know. I guess it could be, but I just feel like that's like, that's got to be what's happening this is, as far as his this appearance. This show's supposed to be nine episodes, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was originally eight, and then so they came back three. and said it was nine. So. Okay. So we got three episodes, because, I mean, I guess it could be a multi-season thing, but I just, I don't know. It I, seems... I kind of hope not. Yeah, I don't I yeah, don't think so. Seems... So, got to wrap... Essentially, assuming that that's the case... You got to wrap this thing up in three episodes. Yeah. Yeah. There's still a lot unturned. <laughs> That's kind of like, what well, a lot of my frustrations are of how slow it is, especially given like that they're short episodes mm-hmm. and such a mm-hmm. large percentage is kind of given to like that filler of like, we're in Malcolm in the middle world now. And it's just, mm-hmm. the I, kids around around you. Candy. I love Malcolm in the middle. <laughs> I did so love, I got so excited. Yeah. When <laughs> the opening I was pretty pumped about, oh, but yeah. just with every episode, it's just, they spend, I don't know, like, 
forty percent of the episode mm-hmm. sure. at least, uh, especially with the first two. Just like we're going to be doing a recreation of a show that you've seen before that has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, it's just some yeah. you know drama happening. So, yeah. speaking of the actual television part of this episode. They had so the marquee on the theater had in The Incredibles and The Parent Trap, yep. which came out like six years apart. Mm-hmm. Like Parent Trap's 98, unless it's the original Parent Trap from like the Look, 60s. Man, it's probably or just a dollar theater, chill out. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's intentional. I know that they did yeah. it for a reason, but I'm, I don't know what that that's, reason that's is. Like, well, I mean, you I don't got- know if they're. You've got Parent Trap being kind of mischievous twins, which are her kids, right? Like Wiccan yeah. and Speed being uh, Billy and Tommy. And then you've got The Incredibles, so a family of superheroes. So you've got a, a family right. of superheroes. I mean, like, that's all I could really connect to it. I don't. Yeah, I mean, that's. I see what you're saying on dates, yeah. though. That's the literal connection. I'm, I'm just, no. I was just curious of the year difference, if that, if there were some. Disney it, properties. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they, they are Whoa. so they're just they're just they're just, they're just pushing meta-pad. other disney plus titles yeah. hey go watch <laughs> the parent trap when you're done yeah <laughs> okay we got like a inception Should, thing going on i shouldn't, I shouldn't have I thought too heavily about you got me dang it <laughs> all right well i'll go watch it after this i was just curious i was wondering maybe if it's like they're just showing that this isn't a specific like time yeah. that this is a you know, kind of a, a decade. Mm. I mean, it's not, it's, it kind of splits mm. it both ways. So 98 mm. and 2004, but mm-hmm. that it was just trying to be like, okay, this is not like, a, like 1999. This is, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. the range that they're going for time wise. I don't know. Yeah. So as Marvel guys, did you guys appreciate their kind of their Halloween costumes being nods to their more traditional comic looks? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, and I think that that's I, like, I know that. Go ahead. I was just saying, I think that that's the big thing is we were never going to get, and I, I feel like this is true in most cases of, of superheroes in general, right? Like we're never going to get usually their comic book, quote unquote, comic book accurate um, uh, uniforms. They're always going to be slightly different, but uh, this was a way that it made sense for them to do something like Scarlet Witch's uh, outfit that's just ridiculous, right? And Visions is re- just as ridiculous. Uh, and then they went mm-hmm. to Quicksilver uh, with his hair as well, and even Quicken and Speed got their outfits. So, like, yeah, I I liked that they did that because um, it, it kind of goes back to like we're probably never going to see the bright yellow Wolverine costume, <laughs> even though they've hinted at it and talked <laughs> about it so long. Um, it'll always be that kind of off, you know, off costume. So. Sure. Yeah, I think yeah. they're costumes that like we don't really want to see in the movies because they're that <laughs> ridiculous, but it's cool to yeah, like kind of yeah. see him like that nod and brought to life. Yeah. It's just like sure. uh, Luke Cage uh, in the Luke Cage series. He put on all this stuff. He's like, man, this looks ridiculous, but it was his true comic book uh, original, you know, appearance mm-hmm. costume. So. I think that if anybody's going to do it though, the MCU, if you're going to get a Wolverine accurate costume, then they'll yeah. figure out a way to do it. Um, but That's I just true. I feel I don't feel like they'll I don't know maybe they will but <laughs> I just don't see them going the more like grounded approach like Fox did. Um, mm-hmm. I will say the Scarlet Witch her little crown like that was the first time I like seeing something on screen where I like kind of gave me um, uh, I don't know why I'm blanking right now <laughs> X Men baddie the uh, Magneto oh Magneto Magneto yeah. vibes yeah yeah. Um, I, I don't know why that was. I mean, maybe it's just a color thing. Maybe it's the I mean, metal thing. But it's it does, it's, yeah. it's her father. So <laughs> yeah, but for sure. That's that's yeah. That's I mean that was the first time that because I I, I'd, I guess I had seen people talking about it online mm-hmm. over the last few weeks. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess with the Evan Peters stuff happening, thinking maybe they'll start phasing fast better in or whoever else in. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so that, I don't know why. That was just something that I noticed. We were talking about costumes. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, so they 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 always have these commercials. Oh, yeah. But in at least one commercial per episode. What was this one about? The Yo Magic commercial. <laughs> Anybody know yeah, the significance? Because I, I didn't get The other ones are like, oh, Stark Industries or they're, t- you know, whatever. But yeah. you know, like this one, I was like, I don't know what this is. There's been a couple of them. I feel like there was one in like episode three maybe that i was like 
I don't get it. Which, <laughs> yeah, so it's like you've had the Stark Industries, which was the toaster, um, mm-hmm. you know, referencing essentially the bomb that killed her family. Uh, you've had, let's see, the watch, um, struck her like watch. Hydra. Yeah, which is the Hydra. You had the soap. Um, and the soap, they say, has some kind of ties back to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, there's a, a spinoff where they find um, Agent Coulson, and he's like, don't use the blue soap. Hydra's mind, you know, uh, uh, mind washing everybody, brainwashing everybody with with a blue soap. Uh, so I think that was a little bit mm-hmm. of a nod to that, but there was some other pieces in that. And then you had the Lagos paper towels, which is the direct reference to um, her blowing up the building in Lagos um, uh, that created Sokovia, you know, um, mm-hmm. uh, act and all that. And then, yeah, you know, no, go, no, go ahead. <laughs> and then, and I, then, I, yeah, you have the shark now. So um, I don't, I don't know. Like, I think this is the one that's not the most obvious so far. Um, mm-hmm. But from what I've kind of seen and heard, it's it's kind of tying back to the fact that um, potentially um, the kid, which has also been the darkest one so far, where the kid dies trying oh, yeah. to open the <laughs> trying to open commercial the is dark. <laughs> um, so can't so open you, that yogurt. He dies. <laughs> And and so you guys kind of hinted at it. Oh, it just, it's not a good way to sell your product. I'm just going to say, <laughs> sell your product, make it where you can open the yogurt. Yeah. So so you guys hinted at it on the last uh, episode with the House of M. Um, so House of M is is definitely within this series. Um, even within the uh, credits where they thank some people, they thank the creators of the characters and things like that. Two of the writers from House of M are in that list of of people that they're thanking um, in uh, in the credits every time. And in the House of M, part of that is um, Mephisto is using Wanda and using her powers to do all of this stuff. Um, and it's it's close to what you're seeing in the series. It's not exact, um, but I think Marvel does that pretty well, where they find comic book series and they're just slightly off of it, so sure. you can't guess what's going to happen. Uh, so there's a potential. That the shark, and this is just again what I've what I've read out there, the shark could be Quicksilver, uh, which could be essentially Mephisto potentially in his uh, in that body kind of controlling things, um, and he's draining her um, essence and her power, which is why the yogurt was red. So it's kind of that red uh, power going on. So she's trying to use it, but you know it it ends up killing her in the end so i've seen that one i've seen also the people that she's controlling could be those people so she's using their essences and that's them kind of like trying to open up the yogurt trying to get free uh but i I don't think anybody has like a clear vision of what it means uh based on everything i've read so this is great i just don't have this (laughs) i just don't have the knowledge base on marvel that i do on dc so it's good to hear this stuff chris i guess you're confirmed last week on your house of m thing i mean i think i'm probably on the same uh same breath here with the shark um Mm -hmm. commercial probably more so like my thinking was and i think both theories sound cool but uh the people maybe Mm -hmm. like it's hinting that wanda is um in essence like killing them like it can't last and it's you know add some like a well, adds, urgency to yeah. the matter um, i guess it leans yeah. a little bit of credence to the anytime they're ever a, like awoken by vision they're like screaming like for mm-hmm. help won't trying mm-hmm. to get out and then yeah. and also the girl that's crying that yeah. you know so there's sure. some sort of pain element torture element that's going on yeah uh so yeah i, mean, I can see that too there's there's another cool theory that i saw literally as uh, we were getting onto this that somebody came up with. Um, and I think Nerdist covered it as well um, a couple hours ago. But um, this theory, which I, again, I think it's a stretch, but each of the commercials is one of the stones. Um, and if you look at like the toaster, the toaster, because the emblem is on the top of the toaster, like a forehead is supposed to be the mind stone. Um, there's also some precedence of uh, Wanda calling the vision a toaster. Uh, in some comic books, there's um, uh, the Lagos one is the Aether because it's a red liquid. Um, and potentially, the um, I think this one was the Soul Stone. So the they're equating it to the Soul Stone and the fact that you have to give up something in order to get something. And it's like the kid's giving up 
his life and his soul essentially in order to get to the yogurt, uh, which again, you can't have both type things. Um, so I don't know. It, it seemed like it's an interesting, but I do think it's a little bit of a stretch. Um, I mean, we'll definitely mm -hmm. see because that means next episode it would have to be the Power Stone because it's the only one left based on all the commercials. Um, mm -hmm. But if if that works out, then maybe that that's a sub hint inside of it, right? <laughs> Seem yeah, seems like something they could they would try to pull off too. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you guys think that this show would be kind of the launching point that? Marvel would want to use for kind of the introduction of like the next big villain, like the next Thanos for the universe. Like I have a hard time wrapping my head around them doing that in this show mm -hmm. first one of the doom movies coming out like a much bigger, yeah. more eventful mm -hmm. type thing. So that's why I'm starting to get like a little bored with it. I'm like, okay, I don't really think we're going to get like a Mephisto. And if we do, maybe it's almost like a throwaway character kind of yeah. like they did with Dormammu and you know, Dr. Strange. Um, so I'm starting to feel like this matters a little bit less um, as we go mm -hmm. further into it. And that's, I'm hoping it's not the case. And I hope that <laughs> Evan Peters really is the Evan Peters Quicksilver, just like a little brainwash, like she's imparting something yeah. of, you know, the Aaron Taylor Johnson version, like onto him and it's all kind of muddied. So I'm, I'm really hoping we do see some sort of a crossover. Um, I just, I really hope it's not like a nod to the fans of like, hey, look, here's the guy that played that oh, version, well. but we're not going to use that universe, just the characters in our own way. So... Uh, One thing they do have going for them, though, is like, I mean, they don't shy away from, but these Disney Plus shows, they're not shying away from the, like, bomb dropping character of, like, the Luke Skywalker thing in Mando, yeah. like, um, and they're obviously pumping a ton of money. What's the budget we talked about last week's 220 or something into the show? I think it was 215. <laughs> yes. I mean, something like that. But... Um, so, I mean, <laughs> You're right. You would think like yeah. you would save that for a theatrical type deal. Um, but like it also, I guess it just wouldn't shock me if yeah. they yeah. did. Do you have I, any thoughts on that, Rambo's uh, support character that she's been talking to of who this might be? Someone we've seen in the MCU yeah. before, maybe someone we haven't. No, I think, I think honestly, I think it's either it's in my opinion, it's either going to be Reed Richards or it's going to be Victor Von Doom. I think it is fantastic Four. um, it makes so much sense because again, in the comics, uh, the fantastic four actually creates, um, Reed Richards creates the vehicle that can do the multiverse, um, stuff when they get into secret wars and, and some of those pieces. So I, I do think it's something like that. I think they could give us that whole like curveball with it being Victor Von doom instead of Reed Richards. And then it being like, Oh, you're, you're interesting. You know, you're introducing Dr. Doom, but he's not necessarily a bad guy yet. Right. But he, becomes mm -hmm. you know worse after which could be sure the hint at the next big bad over time um that's intriguing yeah, yeah but i mean but to go back to the question i don't think we're going to get like the thanos introduced in this series or uh falcon and winter soldier i think we may get hints around some of the lesser minions and maybe that's where we see like dr doom being set up for a you know a phase five or, or something beyond that um and Mephisto could like, I do think that they need to bring Dormammu back in some way. I don't think it's here, mm -hmm. but I also am not sure how quickly they want to jump into a villain like that when we're going to have an entire year to wait for Dr. Strange. If they would have been back to back, like they were originally planned, yeah. I could totally see it, you know, introducing some big bad, but uh, with now the, the year break and the fact they added a ninth episode, after the fact, I think they've had to like rethink how to transition some of these shows a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, Britt, did you yeah, read any of the uh, the comics that kind of dealt with Reed Richards and the multiverse and like his what, what did he call it? like the Legion of Reeds or something? <laughs> where he had like his whole it was he was basically yeah. like Rick and Morty. Like he would have his little like <laughs> citadel of like himself and like talk yeah and, like talk about the goings on of each universe and yeah. possibility and all and, that. like the. It kind of touches into like the Illuminati pieces and stuff. Yeah, I've mm -hmm. I've read a handful of uh, random comics, uh, a, a lot of the random newer ones. Like I'm a huge old school fan, and when I say old school, I don't mean like the 50s. I, I'm more like the um, the 80s and 90s. So I have a lot of Todd McFarlane stuff. I pretty much have every book Todd McFarlane's ever written or drawn. Um, but then also just around that 90s X Men franchise and stuff. So that's kind of my mm -hmm. sweet spot. But I loved uh the crossover events 
So, um, you know, whenever we get the Secret Wars type stuff, so when that came out or even the Thanos stuff came out a couple years back, I went and got those books and stuff. And I find it intriguing of how they want to do that with the multiverse. And we will get there. I mean, it's right in the yeah. title. Um, and there was a, a leak, spoiler, whatever, of um, Ant-Man 3 introducing Kang the Conqueror, uh, which mm -hmm. could then set up all kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, what you're saying is John Krasinski episode nine then, right? <laughs> very, very potentially. I, you know, I also, I also wonder what's going to happen with that because now there's been for the past, what, three, four years, everybody's been saying he needs to be uh, Mr. Fantastic. So it's going to be curious and it'll be interesting to see if they actually cast him in it. And if they don't, how, how many uh, Marvel the fans backlash. yeah are going to, going to make a big deal. <laughs> how great would it be if they brought John Krasinski in to play like, just a throwaway character. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, so I actually like, find uh, it Matt Damon and Thor Ragnarok. <laughs> yeah. I I actually find it funny because I, I want to see um, when they get into into Doctor Strange uh, and his movie going through the multiverse. Uh, there was something a rumor a while back going around that what they could do with it is all these people that didn't get the parts they auditioned for. So for instance, uh, John Krasinski. Um, audition for Captain America and didn't get it. So like when they get into another universe, you have him as Captain America. I think Tom Cruise auditioned as Tony Stark. And like you had all these big people playing these other characters and it's like, yeah, that could have happened in this universe. It didn't in ours, right? So it, that yeah. could be one of those. Yeah, the What too. If series uh, yeah. confirmed too. Yeah. 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 They've kind of done that to a degree with DC on like the Lego stuff. They've let like, mm -hmm. you know, like Nick Cage voice Superman and... Yeah. Um, they had uh, Billy D. Williams do Two Face and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean that could be cool. So here's a question that I have: just going forward for the entire MCU, do we think that they're gonna do another like event? We're building all this up to this new like this big like end game Infinity War type you know team up movie again. Or are they going to do kind of maybe like what you were mentioning about maybe there's maybe it's not just like one villain, but like a team of villains mm -hmm. that takes on, you know, teams of. I mean, I'm, or, I'm curious what you think, Chris, but I, I definitely think at this point they made so much money doing it. <laughs> Why would they not try to do it again? Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I hope they would. I think it drives a better narrative, especially the way that they have all these properties that like overlap, like for them to all kind of go in a direction. I think it's much more enjoyable and it makes a little bit more sense. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious because looking at their thing. slate, you know, you've got a lot, they, they seem less, I mean, I'm sure they are going to be connected, but yeah. they just seem more standalone than they ever mm -hmm. have. Yeah. Um, especially when you factor in like Eternals and Shang-Chi and, yeah. um, you know, I, and then the Guardians 3, I mean, I, they, it seems like they're, they're having like, they're going to group different factions of, yeah, you know their universe over here, and, and I'm sure they'll they'll end up coming together again at some point. But I think, I think I'm just curious because usually they have like on, and maybe they're just holding back on revealing because they've yeah. they've kind of let people know, okay, we're doing this, 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 and then here's the team up movie, and then you know, but mm -hmm. now it seems like all right, we've done that, and it seems like they may be going a little bit of a different direction because I just mm -hmm. don't. I just don't see how they ever top something like Infinity War and Endgame, and I think it maybe they're maybe they're thinking the same thing. Okay, maybe instead of trying to do that again, we yeah. reinvent ourselves and do something different. I think be very reliant on I think the Fox properties because just because like they're really getting into. I mean, they had some B level characters in the early phases, but they're really kind of like starting to get into those like lower echelon of Marvel characters. Yeah. And it'll be interesting to see how they yeah. phase in the, <laughs> the characters they couldn't use before who are more high profile. I, I think this is kind of their break, to be honest. I, I think that this phase is going to be a, a slow setup phase. So I think you'll have a couple movies that are one-off movies. Um, I think during that time, they're also trying to sunset a bunch of characters. I mean, They've tried to get rid of Iron Man multiple times now and he keeps coming back. Like, again, love all the characters and love all the casting they have, but I think they're trying to kind of move those guys out. And so you have Falcon and Winter Soldier trying to set up, um, you know, kind of the new Captain America. 
you have potential of you know getting the young avengers so they have like um hawkeye transitioning um his role and and so i think that i think we will get the team up but i do think that this next year or two is kind of let's take a break let's set up the universe again so the internals could give us somebody like galactus um and not just a giant cloud in the sky but actually galactus um <laughs> you know because there's a lot of stuff within fantastic four you could use uh again um dr doom could be a, a either a big bad or like the loki type big bad right that's involved in everything um but not necessarily the the big one like like thanos so maybe that's galactus or something so I definitely think that it feels sure. a little strange with the the lineup that they have scheduled for the next year, but I think it's this whole everybody gets three films and that's become kind of the problem. And I think that kind of going back to, do you think there's going to be multiple uh, seasons of these shows? I think these are kind of like with Wanda and Vision, I think that this is kind of their show to kind of start to write them out of it. And then you'll have their kind of uh, swan song in Doctor Strange 2. Um, same thing for like mm -hmm. Falcon and Winter Soldier. I think you'll get this episode. You may get a second season of that one, or you'll see them kind of transition uh, into something else and then kind of, you know, fade out from there. Cause I think Sebastian Stan's getting close to his, his contract. He may have like one or two more things. Then he's on to play Luke Skywalker. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> he dang well should. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it, it is well. interesting regardless <clears throat> the way that they are. I mean, when the first Avengers came out, that was kind of a, a big deal. Nobody had done that with movies before yeah. of having all these things connect sure. the way they did. And now, I mean, they're kind of doing a first again where they have an established movie universe and mm -hmm. then they're doing like a little sitcom type show. You know, we've got mm -hmm. a few in the works and then they're going to like transition and be connected back into movies that are already scheduled and planned. So it's, it's mm -hmm. interesting what they're doing. I just have no idea what it is. Yeah. And they, you yeah. know, they tried it a little bit with Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And again, not saying the show is amazing or anything like that, but I think it was season two, the end of season two transitioned straight into Age of Ultron. And to me, it was like one of the coolest things because you, that first mission they're on in the movie, you actually understand why they're there because the last two episodes of that season told you why they were there. Um, but after that, it was like, you know, when they did the whole split between the movies and, and the TV uh, within Marvel, it like, they went off on their own little thing. Um, but, Feige's distanced himself from the show, mm -hmm. right? Like yeah. you kind of said, like it's not even <laughs> canon or something. Yeah. I haven't watched it at all. I don't really know much about it, but yeah. I have kind of seen <laughs> things like that. It's definitely interesting because the ending of it goes into Sword. Like, I mean, so they they essentially go from being Shield to to Sword. Um, there's potential that they've talked about. Um, uh, Quake, who's the main character there, coming into the the MCU universe, so uh, with the Young Avengers and things like that. So there's a potential that they could tie it all back together, but with this whole multiverse thing, that could be the easy explanation is, well, that's not really the same one. This is this person, just like they're doing with Gamora, right? Like Gamora is a different Gamora from a different timeline, but you're still going to see her in the in the show now so, or in the movies. Yeah, sure. I'm also curious how the Spider-Man side of this factors mm -hmm. in or out because it seems like they have, you know, they have one more film with him. That's, you mm -hmm. know, quote unquote MCU. And then they're also supposedly doing uh, multiverse stuff. Mm -hmm. If the trades are to believe or the rumor mill or whatever, but <laughs> it just seems like it's it would time. be a missed opportunity yeah, no. because now, now the MCU has access to like Kingpin. And yeah. if you're not going to be able to do, kingpin with spider-man it's like come on like, we've never been able to have that live action no. but now kills me now they're gonna you know just unless they do it in this next one and i guess they could yeah. uh but hopefully hopefully they'll extend that contract and be able to continue spidey in the mcu but who knows i don't yeah. know what they're i i feel like about. i feel like spider-man as much as i love uh, into the spider verse. And I think that there's so many great aspects of it. I really kind of wanted it to fail. So Sony had to sell the rights to Spider-Man back. Uh, but uh. it was so good. I'm just like, uh, well, yeah, Sony's going to keep doing what they're doing now. Cause they got, they got money. So, uh, yeah, I, it, it'll be interesting because to your point with Kingpin, I mean, they're getting Marvel's getting daredevil back now. Um, so kind of teaming up Spider-Man and daredevil against Kingpin would be amazing to see. Um, but I don't know 
you know, to that point, will Sony keep doing this now that they've had into the uh, Spider-Verse, they've had Venom that was pretty successful as far as money wise, uh, even though, again, it was kind of the reviews weren't always 100 percent good. But, um, you know, they've got the new one coming out with Carnage. So, yeah, it, it's weird. Like it's one of those just like X-Men, Spider-Man, X-Men, they're always going to make money. Maybe they won't make as much money as, you know, what uh, what some of the MCU films were doing, but they're definitely going to make make money as they continue down, even if they're not directly tied to the MCU. Right. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, I'm, I'm excited about what, you know, what they could do on the Sony side, especially mm-hmm. folding in, you know, if they're folding in any of these legacy characters doing their own little multiverse thing, similar to, mm-hmm. um, into the spider verse as well as like, you know, and then if they end up doing like a sinister six, you know, approach with mm-hmm. Lupin Hardy's venom and that, you know, other, yeah other incarnations, uh, the Doc Ock, uh, yeah. the mm-hmm. Alfred Molina, Doc Ock, that kind of, I mean, that could, that still is very exciting. Yeah. Um, but I want to see Craven first and even like Marvel's blade series. I'm just like, you know, that could be, real. I hope that they, you know, give it the, you know, make, make it rated R. Don't pussyfoot around blade. Yeah. You can't make a PG 13 blade. It's just, Hal's not gonna like that language, Brandon. <laughs> no, that's not that's not an expletive. You can say that. Yeah. Uh, but I just, yeah. you know, he's not gonna watch this. It seems <laughs> like because, and then and then there's the Deadpool element. So yeah, yeah. like how they factor Deadpool in, and and supposedly they are making Deadpool rated R. So it seems like they're gonna take swings and. Yeah. I just wonder how. I just wonder how it's all gonna play out. Um. And well, we should do a uh, we should do a full on episode talking about the multiverse potential. Yeah, I feel like that'd be a fun thing to spend a whole episode talking about. Yeah, and and I definitely think uh, you know with Disney doing some of these things, like we've seen the Hulu series uh, being a little bit darker. We saw the Netflix stuff before, but I, I definitely think they it. can. I haven't seen. It. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, they have like. Uh, Are you talking and, about? What is the the runaway? What is it? I don't no, even know well, what it is. Well, they had runaways, but then they had a uh, um, Hellstrom. So Hellstrom is in the whole Ghost Rider like world. Uh, pretty violent show, um, and it was in the Marvel canon. Um, so there, there's potential. Again, I know that Blade's supposed to be on Disney Plus, but with the fact that they've been slowly moving more and more of the Fox stuff over, um, they may just end up saying, "Hey, Disney Plus has a." Uh, just like Netflix, right? A kids and an adult section, and you know, here's your stuff that's maybe not potentially R, but is whatever rating that allows them to be there, right? Above PG thirteen, but doesn't sure. actually have the hard R type writing, or, you know. They, I mean, they're already doing that in other markets in the U.S. Mm-hmm. They have the star uh, yeah. section within Disney Plus, but just not here yet. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I can see them doing that. I didn't know that Blade was going to be Disney Plus. Like the Max or whatever they used to uh, rate them. (laughs) Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. It'll be interesting. Do, um, I guess we should probably wrap up here. Um, We do, Britt, I don't know if you're interested in coming back, but it was awesome to um, hear your input on stuff. Chris, Obviously, it's great. Got nowhere to have else you. to go. Yeah. <laughs> uh, That's no place else to go. <laughs> nah, def- um, definitely. But any, we'd love time. to have both of you guys back. Anytime. Anytime. Cool. Well, we're doing this weekly, so come back next week. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. All right. Same Wanda time, same vision channel. <laughs> you, you trademarking that? <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, all right, guys. Well, um, like we mentioned at the beginning of the show, uh, if you if you love talking comic book movies, Marvel or DC, uh, hit us up on Twitter at Cape Cash Show. Um, obviously, drop down in the comments here and let us know what you think of the video. If you've got any theories about WandaVision uh, or multiverse stuff, if you'd like to see us do a whole episode on just kind of talking multiverse concepts or theories, let us know. Um, and then obviously hit the subscribe button. Um, we love doing these videos for you and we want to get them in front of as many people as we can. So, and, um, uh, Britt, why don't you plug your, uh, Twitch channel? Yeah. 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 So if you, uh, have one of those, yeah, if you want to check it out, 
uh, twitch.tv slash default Dan, um, all one word. That's uh, the Twitch channel. I stream um, some Disney related games, things like that. I hang out twice a week, Mondays, Wednesdays, 8 p.m. Eastern. Um, yeah, we, we also talk things, Marvel and all kind of stuff on there too, just in between. Whoever's in the chat room wants to hang out. So Awesome. Nice. Chris, you want to and, and push what, what, Grapple, what games Grapple do you play Grapple? there again? <laughs> <laughs> Was that? Was that? <laughs> uh, yeah, Chris. What do you think? What? What is it? Grapplegram. I got nothing. The Grapplegram. Just, just helping out Capecast. I think oh. we could say smash that subscribe button. Okay. Oh, look at you. <laughs> That's so nice kind. of you. So kind. So sweet. <laughs> so, so much sweet. kindness in such a little body. I know. Now. <laughs> I'm really trying. Now. <laughs> so gross. Eat your veggies. All right, guys. We will see y'all next week. So long. See you guys. See ya.